So, uh, hello everyone. Thank you for listening uh, to my presentation. My name is Agustina. I am working uh, with La in Daila's Girash Lab at the UMass. And my today's seminar, I titled The Effect of Nuclear Exchange Factor on its partner, the E. coli HSP70, DNAK, is based on conformational changes. So, as we all know, molecular chaperons are the proteins that help another protein to adopt the native state, and also they avoid the amorphous aggregates, oligom oligomers, and amyloid fibers uh, developed from the unfolded uh, protein states. Among all of the molecular chaperons, here I would like to focus on HSP70. HSP70 uh, is present in bacteria and, eukaryotic, and in eukaryotic cells, and it's involved in a wide a range of functions. Some of them I, uh, I'm showing you here. For example, they, they are involved in the native protein uh, folding, avoiding misfolded proteins, uh, in the oligome assembly or disassembly, in the tran translocating chain, for example, and uh, HSP70 can perform all of these uh, functions. Uh, because it goes through a dramatic conformational rearrangement that is allosterically, allosterically triggered by the ligand binding. But before going into that, I would like to present you the HSP70 structure. HSP70 uh, is formed by the nucleotide binding domain that I'm showing you in blue, and uh, in here is the uh, nucleotide binding site. And then they have the saturn binding domain that is formed by an alpha helical lead and um, this uh, beta sheet structure. And uh, the SPD or the saturn binding domain is connected to the MBD by a flexible linker. Uh, here I would like to zoom a bit on the MBD. The MBD is formed by four uh, subdomains. We have subdomain 1B, 2B, 1A, and 2A. So now, we, uh, we can go uh, through the HSP70 uh, allosterical mechanism. So HSP70 conformation depends on which nucleotide is bound. HSP70, uh, when it's bound to ATP, the substrate binding domain is docked into the MBD and uh, the alpha helical lead is open. Also, the uh, subdomain uh, 1B and subdomains 2B, they are collapsed one over the other one. So uh, we call this MBD conformation a uh, uh, closed conformation. And this this conformation, uh, this HSP70 conformation is a low substrate affinity. After the substrate binding and the ATP hydrolysis, we have the HSP70 in bound through ADP. Uh, in this conformation, the SPD is undocked from the MBD and the alpha helical lead is closed. And the pseudomain 1B and 2B, they are uh, in a bit more open conformation. And this is a high substrate affinity conformation. So to complete with the cycle, we have the substrate release and the nucleotide exchange. And these proteins, to exchange the nucleotide, they need the nucleotide exchange factors that E. coli, uh, it's called groupy. So, uh, how Groupie achieved the nucleotide exchange? Uh, there's a mechanism that was proposed in 1997, and here I'm showing you a cartoon of this mechanism. We have the MBD bound to ATP, and both uh, subdomains are in a closed conformation. So, after the ATP hydrolysis, we have the MBD bound to ADP. And in this conformation, is that group is where Groupie binds. So, we have the first. Uh, a complex, and then uh, this other they propose that there's a conformational change in which the MBD opens even more both uh, subdomains, so the um, nucleotide binding site is uh, more open. Uh, let's say, and um, the from this conformation is that the ADP is dissociated, and we have the APO or the what is called the nucleotide uh, free complex, and somehow. Um, this complex is this group by ATP and groupy um, and groupy leaves. So there's a crystal structure that was also solved in 1997 between groupy and the MBD of E. coli, and this is a structure. Um, however, 
this structure was solved with a mutation in group E, and this mutation is also reported to avoid the complex formation. So uh, here in uh, this project, we ask ourselves how relevant is this structure in solution to explain the nuclear exchange mechanism. So the questions that uh, I will try to answer is, uh, how is the complex in solution? And also, uh, what's this conformational change that allows the nuclear uh, exchange so to start, uh, nowadays we have the alpha fold available. So the first thing that we did is we predict the complex with alpha fold between the MBD and its full length grouping. Um, and this is the predicted complex. And here I'm comparing to the crystallized complex. Uh, the first thing I, here I would like to highlight is group E. Group e is a dimer. And group e has two N terminal tails, a coil coil. Uh, formation and then we have groupy here that is where well, the MBD interacts with groupy and so groupy has two beta bundles and here we have four alpha helixes. So uh, in the the biggest difference of between the crystalline complex and the predictive complex arise in the position of pseudo main to be in the crystalline complex pseudo main to be is closer to one B than in the predictive complex you can see here from the arrows. In this situation, the subdomain to be is more open and it allows and it forms like a pore or a hole uh, in the nucleotide binding site. So to look at this a bit more in detail, um, this opening may arise from the interaction of this beta harping with groupy. So this beta harping interacts with groupy in the plectic complex, but we haven't seen that this interaction in the crystallized complex. So we want to test if this complex is maybe relevant in solution. And um, to start with some structural determinations, we we employ NMA. This complex is about 86 kilodaltons. So um, we employ carbon-13 methyl labeled MBTs samples. These are I or IBL, we label the IBL residues. And in this experiment, group is not labeled. And we record the HMQCs and we obtain the chemical shift perturbations upon complex uh, formation. And here I'm showing you, uh, these are all the probes or all the residues that we have assignments. So uh, I'm showing you that with spheres. So we obtain the chemical shift perturbations in the ADP conform uh, in the ADP for the ADP complex, and uh, they are. Uh, they are shown here in with the red spheres, and in green we have the residues that we haven't observed, like significant chemical shift perturbations. As we can see here, there are some residues, for example, this one, they are in the complex interfaces, but there are some other residues, for example, the three, they are not in the complex interface. Um, this is a video. So yes, um, for example, these three residues, they are not in the complex interface. However, we, as you can see here, we have other chemical shift uh, perturbations in the uh, subdomains interfaces. And here I would like to focus on the beta harping that is on the other side. So here, as you can see, the beta harping, there are, there's no chemical shift perturbations of in this structure in the presence of ADP. And we have some, but small chemical shift perturbations also in the interface of these uh, two subdomains. Then we calculate the chemical shift perturbations in the upper complex, so in the nucleotide-free complex. And in this situation, we observe a bit more chemical shift perturbations. Also, we have perturbations in the interface of subdomain um, of these two uh, subdomains between one uh, 2B, 2B and 2A. And as with the ADP samples, we have some chemical shift perturbation, for example, in this loop that is not in the complex interface and uh, in some residues that are in the interface of these two subdomains. And in this situation, I also would like to focus on the beta harping because it's what, sorry, we are testing. And here, we, I think, here. 
So in here we have some chemical shift perturbations in the beta harpin. So uh, with all of this in mind that in the apple conformation, we have chemical shift perturbations in the beta harpin. And also having in mind that there are chemical shift perturbations in the interfaces of both subdomains is that we move forward and we designed some mutants, especially to test if the beta harpin is involved in the complex formation. So one of the mutants is a deletion. We delete this loop that in the crystal structure, it doesn't interact with groupy, but this loop, it's in close contact with groupy in the predicted complex. And then we have this, um, the simple mute, single mutants that are showing orange. They are mutations based on the crystal complex. And finally, we have these mutations because we have offset chemical shift perturbations in that direction, which we cannot explain. So we wanted to test if something happened uh, when substitute this uh, residue. So we test all of these. Uh, we are, uh, with a, so we um, measure the KD for the complex formation without nucleotide by SPR. Then BD show uh, a KD of form nanomolars for grouping. And we have said the same KD for the single the simple mutants. However, the mutant with deletion, it shows a KD uh, which is 100 folds uh, more weak than the, than the MBD. So that, that suggests us that this loop is um, an important interaction interface for the complex formation. And we can explain this change with the predicted uh, complex and not very well with the crystallized structure. But we want you to study this subdomain a bit more in detail. And we move forward in this situation because we want to analyze several mutants. We decided to employ so, some in vivo assays as um, to test, to do an initial test. And uh, for the in vivo experiments, uh, DNA K is essential for bacterial survival in heat shock conditions. So we designed uh, the mutants, all of the mutations in these situations in DNA K, and we test them um, by these uh, heat shock conditions. When DNA K is functional, the bacteria can live and can survive in the heat shock condition. However, if DNA K is not functional, the bacteria will, will die or it's not going to grow. So um, here we designed uh, several mutants. We have the deletion of this, this loop, but also we have all of these uh, single single mutants, we choose these four residues to mutate because these residues are, are in the interaction interface with the predicted complex and they interact with grouping through different, different type of interactions. For example, this tyrosine is in the middle of a hydrophobic uh, patch, so it shows hydrophobic contacts with grouping. And all of these uh, residues, we uh, we design two different uh, single mutants. One is a soft mutation that only removes the interaction with groupie. And then we have a hard mutation, a hard mutation in which we substitute the residue with another one um, in which um, the interaction is absent, but also this new residue, it creates some mess on some crashes uh, if it's involved in the complex. So. Uh, we did all of this uh, with all of this determination, and um, the he, this is the colon information unit for the NAG wild type, and we observe that when we delete this loop, the bacteria cannot grow uh, in the heat shock conditions as well as if we mutate tyrosine. However, uh, with these mutations in these two residues, they the bacteria can survive, but we have like for dilutions differences in the colony formation unit, so three or two in, with these mutants. Finally, these mutations, it didn't show any changes um, in the colony formation unit, so the bacteria could survive without any problem. Um, all of these mutations, they gave us the idea that this loop is involved, um, this, this loop, of mutation is this loop rendered DNA K not very functional. Um, so we plan to study these mutants more uh, in the future to analyze if these mutations, they impair the complex formation uh, by, for example, SPR. So here to, um, to conclude, uh, I hope that you can believe me that the crystal complex doesn't give us a full picture of what's happening in solution. 
And then, uh, secondly, uh, the of school uh, is an important interaction interface in the complex with Groupy. And finally, that there may be conformational entities associated with the complex formation, and we'll explore this topic more in future experiments. And here I would like uh, to thank all of you to listening for me to me. And also I would like to thank the my uh, my team, and especially thanks to Laila Girish, my my mentor, and also to Eugenia Clerico. And also I would like to thank Alejandra and Constantine, that they were uh, old members of the past who are who are also involved in this project. So thank you. <laughs>